Well, hey there, welcome to Worship Online. Uh, today we're starting off a new series on unwrapping Christmas. We'll begin with a song from Abigail and then a message on Jesus' family tree. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever
This weekend, we begin a new series, Unwrapping Christmas. It seems to me there are two types of people in the world. A people who, when they open a gift, uh, slowly, methodically unwrap the gift as if that paper and ribbon and tissue paper are the only in the world, uh, knowing that they're going to reuse them next Christmas. And then the other type of people who just destroy the gift wrap about as quickly as possible. My fear going into Christmas is that come Christmas Eve, uh, come the actual Christmas celebration, we just kind of tear into the Christmas story instead of more slowly going into it. And so this Advent Christmas, uh, we'll be slowly looking at some of the events and characters who are part of the Christmas story today, beginning with Jesus' family tree. Um, but to begin, if you ever participate in therapy, first of all, no shame. Uh, but if you do go into therapy, the first thing you will learn is you cannot move forward without going back that you cannot move forward in your life without going back uh, to some of the experiences you had growing up. Because if every time your dad got stressed out, he tried to solve that problem by drinking beer, and you find yourself doing the exact same thing, chances are your experiences growing up had an effect on you. Or if your mom spent a lot of time talking about other people behind their back, and as an adult, you find yourself uh, distrusting the people you have in your life, worrying what they might say about you when you're not there, then obviously your experiences growing up had an effect on you. And where you are in your sibling birth order, whether you're the uh, parenting oldest child, the far from parenting middle child, the class clown youngest child, or the uber creative only child, because you had to be creative, uh, your siblings or lack thereof also had an effect on who you are as an adult. All that said, each of the four biographies of Jesus in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, each begin moving forward with the story of Jesus by first going back, going back to Jesus' family. Uh, they slowly unwrap the story of Jesus through his family tree. Matthew introduces us to Jesus through the eyes of his stepfather, Joseph. Mark and John introduce us to Jesus through the eyes of his cousin, John the Baptist. And Luke introduces us to Jesus through the eyes of his mother, Mary. Uh, each of these uh, claims of Jesus' family tree are inherently a proof uh, of the truth of Jesus' story. Uh, why? Because of uh, how unexpected they are. I mean, if you were going to make up a story about God coming to earth, uh, that story would probably be quite epic. I mean, you'd have to think the beginning of a Marvel movie, uh, some Hollywood blockbuster where on the, the first day of the hundredth year, uh, there was thunder and lightning that the world had never experienced before and suddenly all went calm and there was an earthquake at the center of the palace in the capital city and out of that earthquake came this glowing light and from that light, came the Son of God, and he was raised by the king uh, with a mother of unquestionable virtue, and the story would go from there. Or if, even if today in our country, if somebody claimed the Son of God would have come, uh, they would have to have a pretty big family tree. It would be somebody who's the descendant of George Washington. Uh, somebody who attended Harvard and Yale, somebody who uh, inherits Apple and has this perfect family. Uh, Jesus' introduction is so believable because it is so unbelievable. Uh, it's honestly the last thing anybody would have ever come up with. Uh, Jesus is not born in the capital, but in an unknown 
hick town. He's not born in a palace, but a pole shed. He's not conceived by a mother of unquestionable virtue, but by a uh, had-to-get-married uh, teen. He's not raised by a father who is a, a wealthy or powerful man, uh, but a simple blue-collar worker. Uh, and the only thing he has on his Christmas wish list is to divorce Mary. Back then, an engagement required a divorce. And, the quite, and our two kind of challenges we have going into the Christmas story are one, we presume like, oh, I've heard this before. I've already seen this episode. I don't really need to pay attention. And the other danger is to make it much prettier than it was. To make it all sentimental and nostalgic and something worthy of going on the cover of a Christmas card. Um, and yet the catch is, uh, Mary and Joseph were not calm and peaceful, uh, but desperate and terrified. Uh, the hay in the manger was not pristine and glowing, but dusty and drool-covered. I mean, have you ever been in a barn? Uh, the baby was not no crying he makes, but he was an actual human baby who cried till he was red and sweaty. Uh, the biblical claim is that when God comes to earth, he comes to the most unexpected place, to the most unexpected people in the most unexpected circumstances. And so Matthew introduces us to Jesus uh, through Jesus' family tree. And uh, I know um, reading the genealogies in the Bible is not the most exciting thing for a lot of people. Maybe you've had the experience where you thought, man, you know, Pastor Jeremy's been badgering me to read the Bible. I'm just going to pick up and flip to something and start reading it. And you get so-and-so begat so-and-so, and so-and-so -and -so begat so-and-so, or name you don't know, father of name you don't know, who was the father of name you don't know. Uh, and President Jefferson actually said, growing up, his family read through the whole Bible every year, but we got to skip the genealogies. Uh, but the catch is they are there for a reason. Um, but first of all, before we get into the genealogies, uh, Matthew begins with a genealogy. Um, and to clarify, back then, very few people knew how to write. Very few people knew how to keep uh, records. Very few people knew how to keep good lists of names and good records of families. Uh, who are the people who knew how to do this? Tax collectors. It was an important job to keep list of names and who is related to who and how that impacts the taxation. And when Jesus called Matthew to be one of his followers, he left everything behind, everything except his pen and paper and his ability uh, to keep good records. Uh, God doesn't waste your past. Uh, if you're anything like me, there's some moments in your past that if you could click undo, you quickly would. And it's not to say that everything you did was okay, but honestly, God doesn't waste it. That God can use it as a warning to you. God can use your past to help encourage somebody else. That God doesn't waste it. All right, so the genealogy begins uh, in Matthew, the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Uh, it starts out that Jesus is a descendant of David, that Jesus is a descendant of Abraham. Why? Because it was prophesied in 2 Samuel that the Messiah would be a descendant of David. And then the genealogy picks up with Abraham uh, because every Jewish boy who went to school had already memorized Abraham's family tree from Adam to Abraham. Uh, so they already knew that. Uh, from there, Jesus' genealogy goes on, and it actually includes uh, four women. Out of the ancient genealogies we have, none of them include any women. 
and yet Jesus' genealogy includes four women, uh, but they're maybe not Eve or Sarah or some of the matriarchs you might be excited about having in your family tree. Instead, first, he's got Tamar, uh, who prostituted herself to her father-in-law. We've got Rahab, who was uh, a Gentile, non-follower of the Lord, prostitute. Uh, you've got Ruth, who was another Gentile, another despised foreigner. And then you've got Bathsheba, uh, simply listed as the wife of Uriah, uh, who committed adultery with David, uh, who then killed her husband. Uh, so you've got four women, two hookers, two or three heathen, um, and one adulterer leading to a murder that made the headlines. Uh, wouldn't you love to do ancestry DNA and get the results back that that's your family tree? Uh, probably not. Uh, and the catch is God can use anybody in any situation to accomplish his will. Uh, Jesus' family tree includes David and Abraham and people of unparalleled faith. But it also includes some pretty sketchy people who we'd simply call sinners. Uh, there was a common prayer in Jewish day, in Jesus' day, uh, that Jewish men would pray, in which they would thank God that they are not Gentiles, that they are not women, and that they are not sinners. And yet Jesus' family tree includes Gentiles, it includes women, and it includes sinners. Uh, Jesus is at home uh, with all sorts of people. Uh, and then the genealogy concludes uh, with, um, it goes, Jacob was the father of Joseph. Joseph was the father of Jesus. No, it doesn't go that way. It goes, Jacob is the father of Joseph, and Joseph is the husband of Mary. Uh, where the family tree ends in an unexpected way with kind of a question mark of who was Jesus' father, uh, which is a beautiful way to end. Uh, and if you might be wondering, why would they go through Joseph's family tree when Joseph was basically Jesus' stepfather? It wasn't his real biological father. And the catch is back then, whoever raised you, that was your family tree. Uh, you inherited their family tree when they chose to raise you. And then it concludes, uh, so all the generations from Abraham to David were 14 generations. And from David to the deportation to Babylon, 14 generations. And from the deportation to Babylon to Christ, 14 generations. So it was prophesied that Jesus would be a descendant of David. Uh, but then there's 14 generations from uh, Abraham to David, 14 from David to the exile, and 14 from the exile to the birth of Jesus. And back then also, um, so the word David in Hebrew uh, was just DVD. Uh, they don't have uh, vowels. I mean, they pronounced vowels, but they didn't write vowels. Um, and each of those letters also could be used as numbers. And if you add up DVD, uh, the Hebrew name for David, you actually get the number 14. And then from Abraham to David is 14 generations. Uh, from Abraham to the, or from David to the biggest event in Jewish history, 14 generations. And from that event to the birth of Jesus, 14 generations. It's just poetic, really. Uh, so Jesus' family tree includes faithful, heroic people and despised, faithless people. And guess what? Your family tree probably includes about the same mix. And maybe this Thanksgiving and maybe this upcoming month, uh, you're going to be spending some more time with these people. Uh, you're going to spend some time with people who are amazingly faithful, some people who are not. And how do you work that out as you go through this holiday season? Uh, how do you move forward uh, even when you go back home? Uh, a few tips. Number one, everyone is fighting hidden battles. Uh, everyone is fighting hidden battles. Uh, everybody has stuff they're going through that they're not going to quickly share at a holiday party. Uh, one couple is an inch away from getting divorced. Uh, 
or somebody who's pretending he's really successful uh, is terrified of losing his job or whatever it is. Everybody is going through some stuff. Um, so if everybody is fighting hidden battles, uh, what if people are doing their best? Maybe one challenge for you interacting with people is thinking, oh, if I were them, I would do this. If I were them, I would do that, and that would fix it. But what if they're really doing about the best they can? Because uh, the truth is we're all one bad decision away from ending up broke, homeless, or incarcerated. Um, that's just the way it is. And what if giving uh, the way they were raised, the influence of s they've had, uh, they're actually doing about the best they can. And what if we treated them accordingly? Uh, treated them as somebody going through some hard times, uh, doing about the best they can. Number two, extend the grace to others you expect from others and have received from Jesus. Uh, Jesus is so kind to you. Jesus is so loving of you. Jesus is so forgiving of you. Can you share that grace uh, to somebody else? Because uh, one of the challenges, if you spend enough time with Jesus, is you expect everybody else to act like Jesus, and they don't. Uh, but can you be that Jesus in their life? Can you extend grace and forgiveness and kindness and love to them? And number three, uh, what if God invented Christmas and put you in your family tree for a reason? Uh, what if he put you in your upcoming family gatherings this year for a reason? I don't know what kind of family uh, you have or what sort of parties or things you're going to be at this month. Uh, but what if God was no less intentional with your family tree than he was with Jesus? Uh, that he actually put you there for a reason. Amidst all the unwrapping of presents and unveiling of meals and gifts and events this month. Uh, let's take some time to figure out uh, what is Jesus calling us to do this month? Uh, when we look back uh, a month from now, what will we think of this month? Will it just be a few extra pounds or a few extra bills or a few gifts you didn't want and don't know what to do with? Or will we be able to look back like Jesus did and see the hand of God on your days? Please join me in prayer. God, we thank you for uh, the experiences we had growing up. Uh, we pray for healing over the hurts we had. We pray that we won't forget the good times we had. Uh, and we thank you for who you are and for all the blessings you've placed in our life and also for the opportunities. We pray this month that you give us eyes of faith, uh, that you fill us with your spirit to shine your light this month. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for taking a moment to watch this. If you appreciate it, I encourage you to click like, click share, and pass on somebody else who could use it. Have a great week.